The haunted woods where darkness lurks and evil whispers. Deep in the heart of the forest, surrounded by dense trees and overgrown underbrush, lay an ancient cabin. It was a place of mystery, a place that many dared not venture into. But one young couple, eager to escape the pressures of city life, decided to spend a weekend in the woods. Little did they know what horrors lay in wait for them. The couple, Jake and Emily, arrived at the cabin on a Friday evening. The sun was just beginning to set, casting long shadows across the forest floor. They had been driving for hours and were exhausted from the journey. But as they stepped out of the car and breathed in the fresh forest air, they felt invigorated. The cabin itself was a ramshackle affair, with creaking floorboards and peeling wallpaper, but it had a certain charm, a rustic feel that made it all the more appealing. Jake and Emily were thrilled to have found such a perfect spot for their weekend getaway. As they settled in for the night, they heard strange noises outside rustling in the bushes, footsteps on the forest floor, but they dismissed it as just the sounds of the wilderness, and soon fell asleep. But when they woke up the next morning, things had taken a dark turn. The cabin was filled with a putrid smell, like rotting flesh, and as they looked out the window, they saw that the forest around them was no longer the idyllic landscape they had imagined. The trees were twisted and gnarled, their branches reaching out like claws. The underbrush was thick and tangled, almost impossible to navigate, and there was a strange mist that hung in the air, obscuring everything in its path. Jake and Emily tried to ignore the eerie atmosphere and set out for a hike. They thought that some fresh air and exercise would do them good, but as they walked deeper into the woods, the mist grew thicker and the trees more sinister. They soon realized that they were lost, with no idea how to get back to the cabin. Panic set in as they stumbled through the underbrush, trying to find a way out. But the forest seemed to be closing in around them, trapping them in its dark embrace. As night began to fall, they came across a clearing. In the center of the clearing was an old stone altar covered in strange symbols and markings, and standing beside it was a figure, clad in black robes. Jake and Emily froze in terror as the figure began to speak in a language they couldn't understand. It was a guttural, otherworldly tongue, and it sent shivers down their spines. The figure gestured for them to come closer, and Jake and Emily realized that they had no choice but to obey. They stumbled towards the altar, their hearts pounding in their chests. As they drew closer, they saw that the altar was stained with blood, fresh blood, still dripping from the stone, and as they looked up at the figure, they saw that its face was not human. It was a twisted, demonic visage, with eyes that glowed with an unholy light. Jake and Emily tried to run, but they were too late. The figure raised its hand, and a blast of dark energy shot towards them. They felt themselves lifted off the ground, and everything went black. When they woke up, they were back in the cabin, but it was no longer the rustic haven they had arrived at. It was a place of darkness and despair, filled with the stench of death. The windows were boarded up, and there was no way out. Jake and Emily were trapped alone with the horrors of the forest, and as they sat in the darkness, they realized that they were not alone. Something was lurking in the shadows, watching them. They could hear the sound of breathing, deep and heavy, coming from somewhere within the cabin. It was a sound that chilled them to the bone. They huddled together, trying to make sense of what was happening, but the longer they stayed in the cabin, the more they began to feel like they were losing their minds. Shadows flickered across the walls, and they could hear whispers in the darkness. Jake and Emily knew that they had to find a way out, 
but the forest was still filled with terrors, and they didn't know if they could survive another encounter with the figure in the black robes. As they searched the cabin for a way out, they came across a book. It was bound in leather, and its pages were yellowed with age. It was written in a language they didn't recognize, but as they flipped through its pages, they realized that it contained secrets beyond their understanding. The book spoke of ancient rituals, of dark magic that could bend reality to the caster's will. It spoke of a ritual that could banish the darkness from the forest and restore the natural order. Jake and Emily knew that they had to perform the ritual. They gathered the materials they needed and began to chant the incantations written in the book. As they spoke the words, they could feel the air around them grow heavy, as if something was pressing down on them. But they persisted, determined to see the ritual through to the end. And then, just as they finished the final incantation, the cabin shook with a deafening roar. The walls began to crumble, and the ceiling collapsed around them. Jake and Emily were buried beneath the rubble their bodies broken and lifeless. And as the dust settled, the figure in the black robes stepped out of the shadows. It looked down at the carnage, its eyes gleaming with satisfaction. For the forest had claimed two more victims, and their souls were now bound to its dark, twisted heart. And as the figure disappeared into the mist, the forest fell silent once more as if nothing had ever happened. The forest returned to its eerie quiet, but it was not the same. It had claimed the lives of two more victims and had gained even more power. The darkness seemed to grow thicker and more suffocating, making it difficult for anyone who entered to find their way out. Months went by, and the locals grew more and more frightened of the woods. They avoided it at all costs and rumors of strange occurrences and disappearances spread like wildfire. Some even claimed that the forest was cursed by an ancient evil, and that its power was growing with each passing day. But there were still those who were brave enough to enter the woods. Some did it out of curiosity, while others were driven by a need for adventure, but none of them ever returned. That is until a group of researchers arrived in town determined to uncover the secrets of the forest. They were experts in their fields. With years of experience studying the natural world, they thought that they could handle anything the forest threw their way. But they were wrong. They entered the woods armed with cameras, measuring devices, and notebooks, eager to document their findings. They trekked through the dense underbrush, noting the different species of plants and animals that they encountered. But as they ventured deeper into the forest, things began to take a sinister turn. The forest seemed to come alive around them, its darkness swallowing them whole. Shadows danced across the trees, and strange whispers echoed through the foliage. The researchers began to feel like they were being watched, and the hairs on the back of their necks stood on end. Then, one of them disappeared. At first, they thought that she had simply gotten lost, but as they searched for her, they began to realize that something was terribly wrong. They found traces of her clothing, scraps of torn fabric and a single shoe, but there was no sign of her body. As they searched for their missing colleague, they realized that the forest was changing around them. Trees were bending and twisting in impossible ways, and strange symbols began to appear on the trunks. They recognized the symbols from ancient texts, and their blood ran cold. They knew that they were dealing with something far beyond their understanding. The researchers tried to flee, but the forest seemed to have other plans. The shadows around them grew darker, and the trees began to close in cutting off their escape. They were trapped, surrounded by the darkness. One by one, they were taken by the forest. Some were swallowed by the shadows, disappearing without a trace. 
Others were consumed by the trees, their bodies twisted and broken beyond recognition. In the end, only one of the researchers managed to escape. She stumbled out of the forest, her eyes wild with terror, and collapsed at the feet of the locals. When she finally regained her senses, she told them everything that had happened in the woods. But the locals knew the truth. They had always known that the forest was dangerous, and that those who entered would never return. They had warned the researchers, but their warnings had fallen on deaf ears. And so the forest remained, a dark and sinister place that claimed the lives of those foolish enough to enter its depths and the locals knew that they would always live in fear of what lurked within its shadows. As time passed, the legend of the haunted forest grew. Locals avoided it, and outsiders spoke of it in hushed tones, but there were always those who were drawn to the forest's dark allure, who sought to uncover its secrets and brave its dangers. One such person was a young woman named Lily. She had heard the stories of the forest and had always been fascinated by them. So, one day, she decided to venture into the woods to see for herself what lay within. At first, the forest seemed normal enough. The trees were tall and thick, casting dappled shadows across the forest floor. But as Lily walked deeper into the woods, things began to take a turn for the worse. The shadows grew darker, and the air grew thicker. The trees twisted and warped, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers. The ground beneath her feet felt like it was alive, pulsing with an otherworldly energy. But Lily pressed on. She had come too far to turn back now. She was determined to uncover the secrets of the haunted forest, no matter what the cost. And then, she saw it. A figure, standing in the shadows, watching her with glowing eyes. It was humanoid in shape, but its skin was the color of ash, and its eyes were pure white. It seemed to be beckoning her deeper into the woods, its hand outstretched. Lily hesitated for a moment, but her curiosity got the better of her. She stepped closer to the figure, and as she did, the forest seemed to come alive. The trees began to shake, and the shadows grew thicker, coalescing around the figure. And then, everything went black. When Lily woke up, she was lying on the ground, surrounded by darkness. She couldn't see anything, but she could hear strange whispers all around her. They seemed to be coming from every direction, and they were getting louder by the second. And then, she saw them. Eyes, glowing in the darkness, hundreds of them, watching her from the shadows. They seemed to be moving closer, creeping towards her on silent feet. Lily tried to move, but she was paralyzed with fear. She knew that she was trapped, surrounded by whatever lurked within the haunted forest. And then, just as the eyes were about to close in on her, the darkness lifted. Lily found herself standing at the edge of the forest, her heart pounding in her chest. She didn't remember how she had gotten there, or what had happened in the darkness. But she knew one thing for certain, the haunted forest was real, and it was more dangerous than anyone could have imagined, and she vowed never to set foot in the woods again. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. But Lily could not shake the memory of the haunted forest from her mind. She found herself drawn to it, even though she knew it was dangerous. One night, she decided to return to the forest. Armed with a flashlight and a map, she was determined to uncover the secrets of the haunted forest, no matter what the cost. As she made her way deeper into the woods, Lily noticed that the trees seemed to be alive, their branches twisting and writhing like living creatures. She heard strange whispers in the darkness, and the hairs on the back of her neck stood on end. And then she saw it, a small cabin, 
nestled deep in the heart of the forest. It was old and weathered, its roof sagging and its windows boarded up. But there was something about it that drew her in, something that called her from the darkness. Lily approached the cabin cautiously, her flashlight beam piercing the gloom. As she stepped closer, she heard a faint sound coming from inside. It was a soft moaning, like someone in pain. She pushed open the door, and the sound grew louder. It was coming from a small room at the back of the cabin. Lily approached the door, her heart racing with fear. As she pushed the door open, she saw a figure lying on a bed, writhing in agony. It was an old woman, her skin pale and waxy, her eyes wide with terror. Lily approached the woman, her hand outstretched. But as she got closer, she realized that the woman was not alone. There were other figures in the room, shrouded in darkness, watching her with glowing eyes. And then, everything went black. When Lily woke up, she was lying on the forest floor, surrounded by darkness. She could hear the sound of whispers all around her, and the feeling of being watched was stronger than ever. She tried to get up, but her legs felt weak and unsteady. She felt as though she was being held down by some unseen force. And then, she saw it. A figure, standing in the shadows, watching her with glowing eyes. It was the same figure she had seen before, but this time it seemed closer, more menacing. Lily tried to run, but her legs would not obey her. She felt as though she was being pulled back, held down by some unseen force. And then, just as the figure was about to close in on her, everything went black. Lily woke up the next morning, lying on the forest floor. She could not remember what had happened, but she knew one thing for certain. The haunted forest was real, and it was more dangerous than anyone could have imagined. She vowed never to return to the woods again, but the memory of what she had seen and felt would stay with her for the rest of her life, and she knew that the haunted forest would continue to lure in unsuspecting victims, just as it had lured her in.